Back's equation. Last topic is Bragg's equation. Okay, I'll explain how, how this Bragg's equation, what is uh, how to calculate, how we get the calculation also, I, I'm going to explain. So we came to know that solid forms lattices, crystal lattices. So what is a crystal lattice? Regular arrangement of solids, regular arrangement of points or we can say, regular arrangement will be there. So let's take this sort of a arrangement. This is a regular arrangement. Points are nothing but center of the atom. Around this point, atom will be there. This is the center of the atom, that is nucleus. So we have no need to take the complete atom. So nucleus we are taking. So this sort of a regular arrangement is present in case of a lattice. If we consider this layer one, this is layer two and this is layer three and so on. So what, what for what this Bragg's equation is going to help for, to find the distance between these two layers, to find the distance between these two. We are calculating Bragg's equation. We are considering Bragg's equation to find the distance between these two layers. So how we can calculate this one? For this, we are going to use X-rays. X-rays. Why we are using X-rays? Because X-rays are having high penetrating power. Highly penetrating power will be there for X-rays. So they, it, it is a solid. It is a layer or solid layer. So something has the capacity or capability to go into this solid layer, into the solid. So that capacity X-rays have because of less wavelength. So obviously we know E is equal to HC by lambda. As wavelength is less, energy will be more. So X-rays penetrate much more with much more capacity. So if we pass X-ray from this one, from the first layer, the X-ray will come and come to the first layer, then it reflects back. If we pass one X-ray on the first layer, comes on the first layer and it reflects back also. It comes with an angle of theta and reflects with the angle of same theta. That we know. Then if we pass one more X-ray, then what happens? It goes to second layer also. Second layer and it all, again it reflects back. If we pass one more X-ray, it reflects back. So, now let's see what's going to happen. So, if we, we need to calculate this D here. How we will calculate this D based on these two X-rays we are going to calculate? So, first of all, let's take, let's draw a perpendicular from here to here. Perpendicular from first ray to second ray. Then again, perpendicular to this side also. If we say, if we give the names to this A, B, C, and D. Now, let's see how much more distance this second ray traveled when compared to first one? How much more distance, this one is first ray and this one is second ray. How much more distance this second ray traveled when compared to first one? Obviously, 
this is the extra distance the second ray traveled when we compare to first ray so first of all we need to ca calculate these two ad and distance of ad and dc and obviously these two distances are equal so that ray traveled extra distance is ad and dc we need to first calculate these two things so let's see as it is forming 90 degrees angle this is a perpendicular so obviously it is going to show 90 degrees angle so this one will be 90 minus theta this is theta and this complete angle is 90 degrees so remaining angle is 90 minus theta same thing this one with theta now let's see how can we calculate uh, ad by using trigonometry so if this is the part a b and d a b and d a b and d angle is here theta and what is the distance between b and d this is first layer distance between first layer and second layer that is d so distance between b and d is d if we apply trigonometry here what is the distance between ad ad is equal to d d sin theta d sin theta so obviously ad is equal to dc so ad and dc both are equal to d sin theta then what about total path difference total path difference is what is the path difference ad and dc because it traveled extra distance ad and dc as both are equal so ad equal to dc that is equal to dc d sin theta so what about the total so we need to add this one d sin theta plus d sin theta that is 2d sin theta total path difference is equal to 2d sin theta okay this this are two x rays two different x rays we can assume that after reflecting these two rays got merged up and gone out as a single ray then then what about the constructive interference constructive interference or else we can say after reflection they are they both became added and went out as a single ray if we consider that one then what happens then we can see these rays will cancel each other and goes out as a single ray then what is the path difference then what happens the path difference so constructive interference or path difference is equal to integer of the wavelength so path difference or constructive interference is equal to path difference or constructive interference is equal to integer of lambda what is the path difference 2d sin theta integer of lambda n is the integer 1 2 3 so this is our bracks equation calculations we may get this sort of questions everything will be given here we need to find out d they will give lambda with the how much wavelength the ray is going is uh, traveling and by with what angle they will give everything we need then you need to calculate this distance between those two rays so this is about our bracks equation used for calculating path difference so 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda with this we finished our another topic solid state